Welcome to From Dorms to Desks, job hunting tips for those early in their careers, a podcast brought to you by college recruiter Job Search Site, which believes that every student and recent grad deserves a great career and hosted by Work Defined. Join our AI co-hosts as they dive into tips, tricks, and insights that will help you land your next part-time, seasonal, internship, or entry-level job. Let's get your career started. Hey, everyone. Ready to dive into something that can feel like a real catch-22. It's that whole need experience to get experience thing when it comes to job hunting. We're tackling resumes and interviews today where you feel like you're starting from scratch. Yeah, that blank page panic is real. So real. But we're digging into some advice from College Recruiter. They've got great tips specifically for students and recent grads. And hopefully by the end of this deep dive, you'll feel way more empowered. Exactly. Because it's not about having the perfect experience, right? It's more like... It's more like, how do you spin what you do have? Yes. How do you showcase those experiences in a way that'll actually click with employers? Because it's not like you've just been sitting around doing nothing your whole life. Right. You've picked up skills from all over the place. Even if it wasn't a formal job, it's still valuable. And employers actually want to see that story, you know? Oh, totally. And one thing they don't want to see... Those AI-generated resumes. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Like, one of the experts even straight up said to avoid those, like, the plague. Hiring managers can totally sniff those out a mile away, especially if you don't have tons of job experience to back it up. It's so true. It's like, would you rather get a generic form letter? Or a handwritten note. Exactly. You want that personal touch. You want your resume to feel like you, not some algorithm. That's actually why a lot of these articles suggested maybe ditching that whole work history section and going with something more like relevant experience. It's all about being more intentional. So instead of just listing every part-time gig you've ever had, you're curating it. You're picking the stuff that actually matters for this job. Exactly. Okay, but what if even my relevant experience still feels kind of thin? That's when getting specific can be super helpful. One article talked about using numbers to really make your achievements pop, even if they weren't from a job. Ooh, I like that. So, for example, like, did you volunteer for that fundraiser that brought in, like, $5,000 for the animal shelter? Yeah. That's huge. But instead of just saying, I helped with the fundraiser, put a number on it. Quantify it. Yes. Suddenly, your impact's measurable. So instead of saying, I'm good at managing money, yeah, it's... I managed a budget of X and successfully fundraise Y. Exactly. It hits different. Yeah, it does. Right. It shows. It doesn't tell. And that ties into that whole skills based resume thing, which I think is so perfect, especially when you might not have like tons of traditional jobs to list. Yeah. Okay. Break that down for me. What exactly is a skills based resume? It's less about where you worked and more about what you can do, you know? Okay. So let's say. The job description is asking for strong communication and problem solving. Don't just hope they'll assume you've got those. (sighs) Think back. Did you, like, lead a team project in college where you had to delegate tasks? Or maybe you had to, like, wrangle group members and resolve conflicts. Boom. Problem solving. Communication skills. It's all right there. It's like you're translating your experiences into the language employers actually understand. And don't forget to sprinkle in those industry-specific keywords from the job description, too. Oh, right. It shows you've done your research. You know, you're not just out here applying to every single thing you see. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so let's say my resume's polished. They're intrigued. Now I've got to actually talk to a human. Any tips for, like, acing the interview when lack of experience feels like this big elephant in the room? First of all, remember, you made it to the interview, it's right? true. They saw something in your application, so that's already a win. Now it's about connecting those dots face-to-face and showing them why they should be excited to have you on the team. Yeah, I like that. And one thing that came up a lot in these articles was enthusiasm. Yeah. Apparently it's like huge, especially for entry-level roles. Why do you think that is? It's like, (laughs) think about it from their perspective. They're not just looking for someone who can technically do the job, right? They want someone who actually wants to be there, someone who's eager to learn and grow. That kind of energy, you know, it's contagious. Yeah. And it makes everyone around them better. Oh, totally. It's like you can teach someone a skill, but you can't teach them to be passionate. Exactly. Okay, so inevitably, some of those interview questions are going to be about experience. How do you handle those without completely freezing up? Yeah. 
the thing to remember is that you can reframe those questions as opportunities, you know? Okay, okay. Like, think about that classic, tell me about a time you failed question. Everyone hates that one, right? Ugh, my <laughs> stomach just clenched <laughs> thinking about it. But instead of dreading it, use it as a chance to demonstrate your self-awareness, you know? And uh. show that you can grow from mistakes. Pick a real failure, but maybe something small, something you learn from. And then walk them through your thought process, you know? Yeah. Like what you learned from it and how you've grown since then. So instead of pretending we're all perfect robots who have never messed up, we're like, yeah, I made a mistake, but this is what happened. Exactly. It shows resilience and it shows that you're committed to like personal and professional development. I like it. Okay. What about that other interview classic? Why should we hire you? That one feels so direct. It does. Right. But it's a perfect opening to tie everything together. Think. Your skills, your experiences, your enthusiasm, and then you show them how all of that translates into value for their team. So it's like the elevator pitch version of my resume. Yes. Highlight those top three to five things that make you uniquely qualified. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. Okay. And and don't just tell them. Show them. Use, like, real examples. So instead of just saying, I'm a great team player, you could say. Yeah, yeah. In my marketing class, we had this crazy deadline for a mock campaign, right? And I volunteered to take on all these extra tasks to make sure that we could deliver a, like, really great presentation on time. Oh, that's so much better. Right. It's way more compelling than just stating something generic. Mm -hmm. It's like show, don't tell, but for job interviews. Speaking of showing up, how important is it to, you know, really research the company beforehand, especially when you're trying to break into a new field? Oh, it's huge. Think about it, like. You wouldn't walk into a job interview knowing absolutely nothing about them. Oh, really. right. You want to show them you've done your homework, that you're genuinely interested. It shows that, you know, you're not just looking for M1 we eight j job. You're looking for this job. It's that extra level of interest, especially when you don't have years of experience to fall back on. It can really make a difference. Absolutely. Now, I know interviews can be super nerve-wracking no matter how much you prepare. Oh, tell me about it. Do you have any, like, go-to tips for... Calming those pre-interview jitters? Ooh, okay. So for me, practicing my answers out loud yeah. is huge. It's like giving a presentation, you mm -hmm. know? The more you rehearse it, the more confident you feel. Yes. Sometimes I'll even, like, record myself so I can hear what I sound like and, you know, make adjustments. That's such a good strategy. And honestly, don't underestimate the power of a mock interview with a friend or mentor. Yes. They can give you feedback, help you fine-tune your answers. It's like a test run. Exactly. Okay, last but not least, any advice on how to really nail that closing statement? Ooh. I always say reiterate your enthusiasm for the role in the company. Yeah. And if they haven't already clarified, you know, don't be afraid to ask about those next steps in the hiring process. Yes. Like, I'm interested. I'm here. What's next? Exactly. It shows you're eager. It shows you're proactive. Okay, and look. We'd be remiss if we didn't acknowledge the emotional roller coaster that is job hunting, right? Oh, it's real. Be kind to yourself. Celebrate the small wins and remember, you got this. So true. Don't let those rejections get you down. It's all part of the process. Okay. Before we wrap up completely, let's do a quick recap of those key takeaways for our listeners who are ready to like conquer this job hunt, yeah. even with limited experience. You are not starting from scratch. You have a unique set of skills, experiences. Use them. Showcase those transferable skills. Let that enthusiasm shine through. Craft that killer resume. Write that compelling cover letter. Do it. And practice those interview answers. Remember, you're not just looking for any job. You're looking for the right fit for you. So true. And as you're going through all of this, think about this. Mm. What experience, no matter how small, could you highlight maybe on your resume, maybe in an interview, that might surprise an employer in a good way? You know, like, how can you really connect your passions to work that you want to do? Yes. Every experience, even the ones that might seem small or insignificant, yeah. they can teach you valuable skills. They do. They do. Embrace those. Own your story. Go after what you want. You got this. I love that energy. Mm -hmm. And that's a wrap on this deep dive into conquering the job hunt, even with limited experience. We hope you feel empowered, ready to tackle those applications, rock those interviews. Remember, your dream job is out there. This has been From Dorms to Desks, Job Hunting Tips for Those Early in Their Careers, a podcast brought to you by college recruiter Job Search Site, which believes that every student and recent grad deserves a great career. Each episode, we dive into tips, tricks, and insights that will help you land your next part-time, seasonal, internship, or entry-level job. 
Subscribe to this podcast for free now so you don't miss an episode and visit www.collegerecruiter.com to find your next great job. 